So, today is another exciting day where hopefully I get my hands on another classic. So, we are about to set off down to Southampton to see one of the most asked for jet skis on this channel. It is the iconic 1998 months ago I put my Instagram none other than the iconic wave blaster and well it went pretty crazy almost immediately now I've been teasing about buying another jet ski for some time probably about the best part of a year and it was between the iconic blaster I keep saying iconic you're gonna hear that a lot in this video the iconic blaster or the x2 now I put out on Instagram quite a lot about different skis but in particular the blaster just went crazy it had probably three times the amount of likes and interaction that any of my other posts get. So I knew straight away that, well, people probably like the blaster, right? So the search pretty much started there. I started to look for blasters, but in all honesty, there's not a ton of them around. I started to look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, good old Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, Boats and Outboards, and to be honest, there's not really that many blasters around, at least not that many Joe standard blasters. So I was looking for a long, long time and out of nowhere, randomly on a Friday, I believe it was, this blaster popped up that we're going to see today. And well, I couldn't ignore it. The timing is not particularly great. The garage is absolutely full to the brim at the moment with trailers that I'm restoring and skis. So I'm not sure it's even gonna fit, but nevertheless, when you see this one today, hopefully it's as good as the photos look. So the ski I'm going to see today is a pristine, and I mean pristine, even by my standards, maybe the cleanest ski I've ever seen, 1998 Wave Blaster 2. When the engineers at Yamaha designed the Wave Blaster 2, they set out to change all the rules. To create a watercraft that combined dynamic motorcycle style handling, so the photos that I've seen so far of this jet ski, honestly, this, this jet ski literally looks showroom. So when I saw these photos on Facebook Marketplace, you just know instantly, in all honesty, I've seen enough skis at this point, probably too many skis, to know that when you look at photos and you see things like clean polystyrene in the engine bay, bolts that have clearly never been touched, pipes that look literally brand new, you know, things like the bottom of the engine panel, that's already always covered in dirt. You know quite quickly if it's a pristine, clean example, which kind of correlates with what the owner's saying. Now, Gary, from initially speaking to him, I've had a 20 minute phone call with him where he's been super transparent and answered all my questions, exactly what the history is of this ski. And he sent me subsequently around 35 photos additionally of things like the rear pump, the underside gate, any cosmetic damage, just being completely transparent, which is exactly what you want. The more information you can get before going to see a jet ski is obviously preferable because it will reduce your disappointment if obviously you get there and actually there's a discrepancy between what you've seen online. But in this instance, I don't think there's gonna be any surprises. It's just the case of really going, starting it up, not showing too much excitement on my face and then trying to see if I can get a little bit of money off the ski. The only thing this ski doesn't have is the OEM cover. It's got a cover, it's got a Jet Tribe cover. Put in the comments if you guys have got a Jet Tribe cover, if you know what that is. I've never seen a Jet Tribe cover, so I've seen Jet Tribe so many times, <laughs> can't hardly say it. But in essence, it's got a cover, it's just not an OEM cover. So by my standards, that's gonna need to be changed. It's got things like the original owner's manual, even the original purchase receipt. I cannot believe how cheap this jet ski was. I say cheap, still a lot of money. I would have imagined in 1998, this was probably the flagship high-end ski that you could buy. But as with all these classics, before you get excited looking at the photos, the proof really isn't going to see it and you have to be quick. So this ski, like I said, it is so clean. It's literally blown up on the comment section on Facebook. So I know if I leave this much longer than what I have done, Friday and it's now Sunday today to go see it this ski will be gone so you have to be serious about this and I always say to people when they ask me Joe how do you find so many classic jet skis if I see a classic and I've got an inclination that is a clean classic I'll be on the case and going to see it probably within a day this one's two days so should have been a little bit quicker really hopefully Gary's not sold it before I get there now guys if I buy this jet ski I will be making a video specifically why I've purchased or gonna purchase the Wave Blaster 2 versus the 1 and there is logic to my madness I know a lot of you guys will jump in the comments saying the blaster is not as good as the 1 but as with all these things guys I've done a ton of research at this point and there is method to why I'm buying this ski versus a Blaster 1. So I'm gonna stop talking I'm gonna stop teasing I've got a 60 mile journey now so, yeah six, 64 
mile journey now down to Southampton from Bristol. So let's stick some music on and get down there. I'm eager to see this ski. Do you know what, Gary? I've been looking for a blaster for ages on Marketplace. So when this one came up, I was like, got to go see it. That, you know, you see the same sort of skis that come up quite a lot, and then there's certain skis that don't come up quite as much. So you used to see quite a few of these, but at the moment you're not, you're not seeing them. Is it okay to have a little look? Yeah. I've had the 1800 um, the now. bigger skis. I've had sparks. But I started with these, and I've had three now. I just keep going back to these. Look, you, you've done a fantastic job. So gel coat like this here, where it's just bleached a little bit, that needs to be cut back. That's what needs to happen to that. So where you've got the yellowing, it sometimes happen when you leave them, with like a cover on them, like you said, or whatever. It normally happens there with sunlight. It's really odd. It's that normally, in the garage as well. yeah. It wasn't outside. That's odd. With the cover, and I've got the cover for it. So talk me through your normal wash routine, Gary. As soon as I get out of the water, really, because I always carry a container of water with me. Yeah. The pump, I flush it through, wash it off and then duck, uh, spray the oil with GT85. Good man. Yeah. So if you've like gone extensively wave jumping or whatever and protect like salt water, do you ever do you flush the engine bay out, like the, the base of it? I've, on this I haven't. Okay. I haven't, because you see how clean that engine bay is? Yeah. Yeah, so with it's a really difficult one. If you ride in the salt and, and you find that you've been wave jumping or whatever and they're like, it's an inevitability salt gets in. So what you'll find is where you get like the little bit of crystallization, that's where okay, salt, yeah, that, that is where if salt crystallize, like crystallizes, it just hardens. Yeah. So it's always advisable if you, I mean, not, I don't know if you're gonna buy another ski, but if you ever, walk, like you've been in the salt, just douse it off and then normally air compressor, get all the air off, GT85. And what happened, all the water that then washes down through, put the ski right up on his end and it will just run back through to the drain plugs yeah. and out. As long as you're leaving it open in the garage, yeah. Yeah, the, what people go wrong is so they get high pressured hoses and they'll squirt it in there and then it'll just get everywhere. But I'm literally talking light head, wash it out through and that'll just eliminate any chances that you might get. Like, so see like this, luckily, because it's low hours, like low usage, if you do this all the time, eventually you would get salt corrosion in there. But luckily, it looks as if you've not used it <laughs> that much. Once or twice, maximum. Because I was too scared to, I would never beach a ski anyway. But I, I didn't want to go on the beach with this and getting it out of the water, you don't want to mark it. So it's, I bought this and I bought a spark as well. So the spark was what was getting used. But when I bought it... It's got one sticking point, hasn't it? Have you noticed that? No. <laughs> Steering key was notorious, right? They always... I think the problem is well where this is everything is still brand new. It sticks like it. Yeah, there it is there. Yeah, there it there. I don't know if that's in the cable. If you look at the back, do you know what? It's a really fine line as well with the old skis. You want them to be low in hours and you want them to have been really, really looked after like this, but We've had people, haven't we, that arguably say they prefer to buy like two, two, 200 hour skis because they're constantly used, they're constantly maintained. So I don't necessarily agree with that because I prefer pristine. What will happen with things like steering cables is you'll always then get like a point where it will stick. Once you start using it, it will free back up. But um, it's just a byproduct of like, as you said on the phone, these, 
I normally always ripped out Everyone. and it goes to premix. Everyone's telling me now. But what happens is if you don't get the ratios right with the oil, it, then the ski doesn't run right anyway. So that's, that is a desirable thing. Yeah, everybody I spoke to has told me to delete that. Yeah, they do, mate. That's exactly what they say. Because it's, it's a different sort of... And in here, I've got the, the toolkit there, and there's something else down there. I think there's a sponge, but I can't get my hand in there. I'm going to get your doctor to get your hand in there, for sure. Me? <laughs> there's a sponge in there, I think it is, but I don't know what it... Oh, yeah, it better not that. be a... No, no, it's not a big not spider. an animal. <laughs> yeah, so quickly, on that mark underneath, what's happened is when, um, when gel coat gets gouged, which is that has, which is unfortunate, if you leave it, you'll get what's called water ingress, and the water will soak into the fiberglass, and over time, it will just basically spread like cancer. So they've done the right thing by patching it, but whoever's patched it, they've done it with yeah. a, a really odd-looking colour. See, for a living, I repair caravans and okay. caravans and all this. Is it all They're that? telling me that this is an easy thing to sort out. Yeah, like I said, you could... again, I wouldn't do it. it's got to be mopped out. There's actually one more as well. It's the moisture where you just give it a spruce, like a clean... Oh, yeah, I sprayed it. I didn't... It wasn't water, it was this stuff. OK, yeah. giving it a bit of a shine, yeah. yeah. And I've noticed as well on the other skis, I've had they cut this. Uh, the other two I've had... Yeah, it's because as you've just experienced, when I put that good. down, you've got to bend it out of the yeah. way. That's the reason they do it, but... Yeah, what you'll find, right, is online there's just conflicting information on all this stuff. Some Certain people say, for example, like you say, delete the premix. Other people say, no, don't delete the premix. To an extent, this was made by the manufacturer and technical-minded individuals. My way of thinking is, just leave it. Just leave That's it be, exactly leave how it thinking. is. Don't mess when with it. When I was it. riding the ski, I wouldn't ride it with that premix, you know, with the pump on. Yeah. Is that a gel cell or is that a, is that an AMG battery or is that a wet yeah, cell? It's not a wet cell. Good. I made sure I wouldn't get an acid filled battery. AMG batteries are so much better. Yeah. I haven't started it neither. Cold. I haven't started it at all. Good I man. didn't want to do it because I That was thought, think on the way up we were in and I'm thinking a lot of people do that when we look at skis, they start them up and you think. See I look at it, it's like when you buy a car off of someone and it they start it before. It's yeah. Bit, and I haven't started this because I thought we'll get it out, we'll take it up there on the grass, I can put, plug it into my car and, and then we can start it. Top man. One but question I, I did have. It, it, it makes it, to me, it makes it look like I'm trying to pull a fast one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I can't tell is. Have you updated the lines? Because the, the, the lines Nothing on the... At all. Yeah, so that'll have to be done. That's the only thing. So in the 90s, it irritates the hell out of me. All of the, skills are played, the skis are played the same issue. These are not ethanol resistant. So what happens is it eats the pipes yeah, and they know. go gummy and then they just screw the carbs up. So it, it seems destroying and it goes against what we've discussed in terms of authenticity of OEM. They have to be changed because what happens is eventually the inside of these just eat the way out. If it's low hours, again, it's not problematic, but the time is, is the more that it will get used. Um, the only thing I've ever done to this ski is have it serviced. Yeah. Nothing else. I tried to find the guy you were on, but it's not actually someone I've heard of. Because when you Rico said, I thought, Fernandes. yeah, I always just thought you meant the jet ski man. Everyone knows the jet ski man. Yeah, I tried getting him. Yeah. He's always too busy. Yeah. Course, he's very good. Yeah, always too busy. He's just a little bit far from me, but. Um, Rico, he's this area. Yeah, so all that needs to happen is all of these need to be just taken out and changed. Oh, right. Um, yeah, I haven't heard that, I must admit. Which is, a, which is a shame because I'm probably one of the only people that like to try and deliberately... Like, for example, these are incorrect. Are they? Yeah, they're not the right ones. So that I'll change straight away. This See, is all correct. This is the one that was taken off. And to this day, I don't understand. Do you know why? Because in the 90s, the ones that had the YAML wrote on it were like the, the, I, I the, desir the, yeah, the desirable ones. So this is all correct, luckily, which is all good. But the handlebars, have you ever seen, um, it's hard to explain, they should be like dimpled because uh, it was the exact same ones used on the Wave Raider, the Wave Runner. These ones were on the GP. So the GP was the more, the more fancy version, the more fancy injection moulding. So this came later. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a genuine Yamaha part. I'm not suggesting yeah, you not put genuine on there, buddy. When I changed that, I did try and buy the handle grips for it, but I thought they were the right ones. That's... I don't know what these are. As you can see, I haven't even opened the package. 
So that's the originals? No, I bought these. Yeah, but that is the correct year. That's what should be on. See, when I said the dimples, yep. see the little in and outs? That's what should be on it. Yeah, oh. well, that's what should be on it. These are with it if you want. <laughs> I know it seems I'm crazy. Open the packet, as I, you can see. That's quite, that's quite reassuring because they're a nightmare to find. Because he's taken that off and I only had one side. Do you, other... do you have the original key? No, the only other one I've got that I think actually came with this yeah, so that's aftermarket as well. That's odd. I've got one more. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's aftermarket. <laughs> I've got one in the car. I'll show you what it should look like. What that is for is if anyone abuses a ski, what you do is you just stick it in there. <laughs> yeah, that's what you feel like doing something. You get a beauty right there. Maybe they just lost the key. I don't know. That's weird. I noticed in the photos as well, because I'm really, really anal, you obviously cleaned the mark off the handlebars, did you? There was like a white stain on the handlebar when you took the photo. Was yeah, you have cleaned it. Yeah, you've obviously cleaned it off. Yeah, it's a knife. Yeah. It is a bit of a design. Uh, yeah, I think you can see why people cut them, but I, and these here, they're so hard to get hold of, isn't it? The amount of people are here. Do you know what the hardest thing on these is to get? Oh, decals, yeah, I've seen that. People before. recreate them, but you can't, you can't actually get the authenticity, like the colour match. And the thing on the seat as well, there is a, a bit of a default with the seat. You probably saw it in the picture, I would imagine. It's come away a bit, and it's been like that since I've owned the ski. I like it that you're so... If you could... If, like we, if we if you wound it back and you see what his garage is like and the skis in it, I'd like to see it. It could be a Sea Doo or a Yamaha showroom. Yeah. Every ski he's got. The other ski you said you were looking for, I had the Sea Doo GTX 951, but the engine was stuck. Amazing. Yeah, that the middle one. That yeah. So that there is a 1991 XP. That there is a, I don't know how well you know, that's a CDO SP, which my dad had. Yeah. That's a Wave Raider, so that's the 1100. It's quite same, similar sort of years as that one. That's my XPDI, which is actually my dream ski. Yeah, I bought a Spark, so I could use the Spark and not this. So to be honest, and the, the, the theory, the, I prefer this than the Spark. But it's that concern fact that you can't ride it all the time. So you know, you've got to look after I'm it. scared to do anything to this, you know, and that's what everyone says. Yeah. People who buy quality cars. Yeah. And they, they wrap them and look after them. That's like the years with skis. Everything on this would be... Restored. Things, it just be restored, but... Can I just have a little closer look at the cover just to see yeah, what sort of condition it's in? It's, it's, I don't think it's very good to be honest with I had a little look last night. I can get one for the, from the US. It's four, $400. You can get the OEM right. one. So it, it's like yellow. It's got green stripes like that down the side. Yeah, so the, the cover, we... Have you kept up the data tag, Gary? No. no. He's put the number on the top one, though. No, yeah, so the number's present. It just needs to re-establish re yeah. it. I didn't even know there was a data tag on it. People have asked me online. That's what that, no. that's what yeah, the number. So when I was cleaning it the other day, I spotted that. And they want to see the one there, the one in the back, there's normally one here. Yeah, so it's still present, which is good. So those shiny little stickers, one on the front they're, they're supposedly tamper-proof. They are pretty good, but yeah. they still can be tampered with. Okay, should we pull it out and start yeah. it up?
So when you have go, gone riding, uh, would you typically take it up to your friend's house to give it a thorough clean? Yeah. Right. yeah. But most of the time I'm doing it down at the, yeah. you know, at the water. Have side. you got a water source down there? I'll take oh, this. Yeah. Always use this. Except the faster you can be, the better, so that's good. Yeah, except for cow shop. When we go over cow shop, there's all water there, so you can, you've got taps. Just test it comes out. Right. Hopefully this thing works. It hasn't been used for years. I've brought mine as well, if you haven't, if it doesn't work. I thought I'd be having power now, to be honest with you. Give me two seconds, I've got one in the car, I'll yeah, grab it. No, nothing, nothing to test it. But like I say, I didn't want to start it before you were here anyway. To me, it makes it look like I'm sort of... Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's just an eBay yeah. cheapo. I can't imagine there'd be tons of longevity in them, but I'm doing all right at the moment. There's that one. Just there. Put down a bit. How much fuel is in here? There's a sort of half tank, I think, in there. And then the prime. Another reason, you hook that over there, it doesn't knock against that. Yeah. Right. So common misconception guys, you actually pull the choke all the way out, not as Gary was advising, you do not pump it. If you keep on pumping it, you will ultimately flood the engine. It actually says in the Yamaha owner's manual, you pull the choke out for the initial start and you put it back in straight away. Keep pumping it, you just flood it. Yeah. Say that again, mate. Honestly, the biggest mistake people make with skis as well is they get really eager. Like, oh, go again, go again, go again. Oh, yeah, just yeah. wait. If he's going to go, he'll go. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to force it. The canary wants to. When's the last time you started it, Gary? Yeah. Me. I fired it over, but I've never actually. Can we drop down? Can we drop the top down? Started. I was just trying to look if there's fuel in there. Is there fuel in the bowl there? Yeah. Drop tank. Trouble is, so half a tank of fuel, the vapors, like, is it new pet? It's just petrol pump fuel, isn't it? Yeah. So. See, I thought that would be alright. Fuel goes bad so fast. Ran on Quicksilver or Yamaha Lube? Yamaha Lube. Good. Yeah, I think the burn rate then, that's probably if you haven't ran it for a long time. Yeah, that's just to do with the length of the relief. 
So at this point guys, I was pretty much sold. Everything checked out, you know, you can see from this video, Gary was such a straight up genuine guy, he had nothing to hide. And I think although in this video it probably comes across that the ski took an age to start, guys if a ski's been sat for a year, it's gonna be super smoky when you get it going. Which is why I asked the question around Quicksilver versus Yamalube. A lot of the time you get a high burn rate if you're using like third party lube, so always use Yamalube. But in this instance, it was just the time that the ski had been sat. Um, but it ran nicely, no abnormal cracks or bangs or pops or anything you don't wanna hear. Just what you would expect from an old two stroke. Now before you guys go crazy in the comments saying, whoa, that's so smoky. Guys, if a ski hasn't been ran, it will be smoky. That's just nature of the beast. Now for any of you guys that follow my channel, you'll have seen the SP purchase video where I took my dad along. Now some of you guys love that video and some of you guys give me a little bit of hate saying that we were quite harsh on the guy selling that ski. Hopefully this should show you the flip side to the coin whereby if a jet ski's good, we don't try and beat people down on cost. If a jet ski's clean and the story of ownership all adds up, then really I'm not gonna be looking to get much off the actual asking price. However, I would always be strict on what needs to be done on the jet ski. I'll be transparent about that with the owner, which I then find if you're being reasonable, and like in this instance, Gary actually understood the importance of the things that I wanted to restore, there's always a little bit of wiggle room. So in this instance, I've got a little bit of money. I'll let you see what I actually got the ski for to ensure that I can find that final 2% and get this fully restored. Well, I'm not going to mess around. 23 then, and that's it. Uh, and I'm not going to get lower. I'm that's happy with 23. Yeah, 23. I'm, I'm happy with 23. Of, yeah. I wouldn't okay. otherwise. Like I yeah. say, last year I got offered £500 more. That's yeah. right. But I didn't want it because I don't okay. trust them. I think, I think 23 is fair. You alright with that? Yeah. yeah. I think it gives me a bit of room to get the bits done that I want to get. Have you had a look at the paperwork? Yeah. yeah. When are you sent it across? That's what... I think that receipt, the man I bought it off, He's still got the actual original. Yeah. That is a photocopy of the original. I can't believe how low it is. That's the bit I couldn't quite wrap my head around. I would get hold of him if I were you. Yeah. Go is on. he a nice enough guy? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Older chap. But he said him and his friends, he said there's probably more of these skis than that in garages in Guernsey. Yeah. Like this that people haven't used. So guys, we bought a Wave Blaster 2, and I mean, as far as classic jet skis go, I've got to concentrate while I'm driving, I'm super excited. That is as clean as you're gonna find. I will never say that I found a jet ski as tidy as my DI, because my DI is my baby, but man, this thing's probably the closest I think you'll ever find to literally go into Yamaha showroom in 1998 and saying, can I buy a Wave Blaster 2? This thing is so clean. So, so clean. And what a testament to Gary, the owner. He's done such a good job maintaining this jet ski. Ugh. <laughs> Forget that I've got a jet ski on the back, so I've got to be a little bit more sensible. Put in the comments if you guys do that. You go from driving your cars and having a jet ski on the back, and you have to remember that you're pulling a jet ski. But yeah, Gary was just so transparent and so humble, honest, everything I would want. A guy that I could probably talk to for hours about jet skis. He's got such a passion and love for these old skis. And sadly for Gary, He's going to see his car over practice all the time, so he's letting the blaster, the blaster's probably the worst ski for Gary. He's got a bad back, and blasters, from what I've understood at least, are not the easiest to ride as far as jet skis go. Me, naively, I want to actually get me and Megs on this jet ski. Apologies for the sun, guys. Probably looks like I've got half a bright face and half a dark. So I was trying to have a poker face when I was there with Gary, but it was so hard, guys, honestly, this ski. You know, when you're just excited by something, it takes you back to those childhood memories, right? When you see something for the first time as a kid and you're just like, it's really, really hard to be, you know, objective and actually look through things. But to be honest, this jet ski had very, very little in the way of things that I needed to be really cautious of anyway. 
I'd say the only point in the actual sort of transaction, if you like, where I was a little bit concerned is it did take a little while to start, but I did anticipate that might be the case. Gary was very honest and transparent, didn't try to start the ski up, didn't try to get the engine warm, but I have seen that with the Wave Raider as well. If they sit for a while, you know, it just takes a little bit of time for the prime or the choke, however you want to refer to it, to obviously get the fuel through. He literally completely just off the cuff, took the jet ski blessing to his car, and started it up. He only actually has a 12 volt washer. Now, if you don't know what a 12 volt washer is, I am gonna make a video at some point which specifically talks about how this is a great hack for actually flushing your ski when you're in a bit of a pinch and you don't have a water source. So he took the ski, rang to the front of his house where his car was and bless him, we connected up to his car and from a seller perspective, it didn't actually work the, the washer to start with. So then bless him, Gary was getting stressed out. But luckily me being me, I took my 12 volt washer along as well because I thought if he doesn't have a water source, then I want to be in a scenario where I can actually, you know, start the ski up. We got the ski going eventually. And then as soon as that noise bites, guys, you just know, right is it good or is it a dud and the engine although quite smoky which i know is to do with the burn rate and the length of time it hasn't been run i knew straight away this ski was a good one so then it just came down to tiny little cosmetic -y bits that i want to put right and gary was really really receptive to actually hearing the things i wanted to put right so he basically played ball and i offered initially uh to 150 which is quite low considering the ski was listed for 25 initially and then we met at 2.3, which I think is more than reasonable. Two, 200 pounds off gives me some room on the OEM cover that I want to find. Some of the small little cosmetic bits like mopping it. I'll take it into Mitch who I'll get to mop it professionally to get the sort of the yellowing out. Uh, there's a couple of little chips on the underside of the hole which will get gel coat repaired, um, but nothing massive. 200 pounds is not gonna cover all the bits that I want to do to it, but I have to be respectful of it. Gary really didn't need to take anything off of this jet ski if he really didn't want to. So in essence, I see it as a victory. So I've got to tow this jet ski back now now at 60 miles an hour i said 50 once in one of my other videos and everyone went crazy like it's not 50 miles an hour towing sorry guys in the uk 60 miles an hour looking after this baby and then in the next episode hit the subscribe button obviously i'm going to give you a much closer look at the details of this ski all the reasons why i purchased the wave blaster 2 and well it's a great opportunity for you guys to just stare lovingly at an old blaster 2 with some nice b-roll footage so guys as always thank you for watching it means a lot to me that I'm able to keep these classics alive. So guys, do the usual thing. Hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate all of you, all the people that message, all the people that like and comment. It really helps me keep these classics alive. I'm not just saying it, guys, but unless people keep buying these jet skis and doing what I'm doing here, which is spending £2,300 on a Wave Blaster 2, then they will just die out. And when you find these pristine examples like I have today, it's as close as I'll ever get to going into a showroom. God, I wish I was around in the 90s. I was around in the 90s, but... I was a little baby. I wish I could have walked into a dealership in the 90s and purchased one of these, but I'm living that fantasy out 32, is that right, Megs, 32? 32 years later, which in a way is more exciting and more powerful because it's that much harder to find. So if I wanted to repeat myself, please hit the subscribe button and I'll be back with another video very, very soon where we can continue to keep the classics alive. So why have I bought a Wave Blaster? And more importantly, a Wave Blaster 2.